Being a captain is a most demanding role. A captain is supposed to be a leader both on and off the pitch, and for that he has to win the respect of his teammates and coaching staff alike. There's been all too many cases of poor captain choices in recent years, and today we would like to tell you about captains who eventually turned into outcasts. But first, we would like you to answer our question. Which one of them played the most Premier League matches? John Terry, Patrick Vieira, Gary Neville, Steven Gerrard. Please leave your answers in the comments and get ready for watching. Gary Cahill, Chelsea The Englishman joined Chelsea in winter 2012 as he was signed from Bolton and only needed half a season to win silverware with his new side the FA Cup and the Champions League. Gary's further career at Chelsea was marked with solid defending and progress. In 2017, there came his second Premier League title with Chelsea. Though John Terry remained the first-choice captain on paper, it was Gary Cahill to wear the armband most of the time due to Terry's lack of playing time in his last season for the Blues. In his last ever match for Chelsea, Terry lifted the Premier League trophy alongside Cahill thus marking him as his successor. In the 17-18 season, the new captain lacked former quality and consistency and was about to lose his place in the first 11 to the newcomer Antonio Rudiger. Many of Chelsea fans would think of him as finished at that point, and in summer 2018, the new manager Sarri made it clear that the 33-year-old Gary wasn't a part of his plans. The Italian needed a defender of different kind, one with much better passing and Cahill found it too hard to accept the new reality. As a result, Cahill turned into an outcast, only 22 minutes in the Premier League throughout the season and only 6 appearances in other competitions. I was on the back foot, to be brutally honest, halfway through the season. The relationship was gone, I don't think that was ever going to be recovered. It's difficult to have respect for some of the things he did, but I have a lot of respect for the club. However, Cahill still managed to say his final word at the end of the season. Though he didn't take part in the Europa League final against Arsenal, it was Gary to leave the trophy. Cahill left Chelsea as a free agent shortly afterwards and hung up his boots three years later. Mauro Icardi, Inter Mauro Icardi was made captain at Nerazzurri back in summer 2015, when he was only 22 after only two seasons at the club. The previous captain, the centre-back Andrea Ranocchia, was demoted due to his poor performance, while Icardi managed to impress Roberto Mancini with his 22 goals in Serie A. Once made captain, the Argentine remained Inter's biggest attacking threat as he scored 1 of 21 goals by 2019. 8th best result in the club's history. However, despite his goal-scoring achievements, a scandal emerged in 2019. It was then when Icardi made his wife, Vanda Nara, his agent, with only two years remaining on his contract. His wife was eager to make the most out of his situation, and that didn't please the Inter board, as they were unwilling to meet Vanda's hefty demands. Icardi's signing fee alone would have cost the club as much as 9 million euros, so it's no surprise that nothing came out of the negotiations. That whole story resulted in Mauro turning from a fan favorite to a scapegoat. In February 2019, it all came down to Mauro getting stripped of his armband and Samir Handanovic being made captain instead of him. Later that year, Antonio Conte took over and the Argentine was immediately shown the door. The 26-year-old Icardi left the club for PSG, the side which was ready to give him the salary he wanted. At the same time, Mauro suffered from the lack of playing time due to the number of world-class attackers in the team. So in the end, he left PSG last summer as he was sold to Galatasaray for 10 million after he had had a loan spell at the Turkish club. Granit Xhaka, Arsenal the Swissman Granit Xhaka moved from Borussia Mönchengladbach to Arsenal back in summer 2016. The midfielder was only 23 years old at that moment, but already had solid Bundesliga experience under his belt. However, his lack of consistency during his first couple of seasons at Arsenal was a beast small, and Arsenal fans were far from pleased with his signing. Three years later, in September 2019, 
The manager Unai Emery announced Xhaka was to become the new Arsenal captain. The Swiss man's leadership qualities were always out of question, but the fans still saw it as a poor decision. And unfortunately for Xhaka, it all went down to a disaster only a month later. In late October, when Granit was subbed off against Crystal Palace, the fans gave him a deafening obstruction. His patience ran thin and the Arsenal captain lashed out at his own fans with swearing and indecent gestures. Then he took his captain's armband off and deliberately threw it on the pitch. And unsurprisingly, that was the last time he happened to wear it. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang was made captain instead of Jaka, while the Swissman was having a hard time at Arsenal. The fans wanted him sold and Jaka himself was eager to change clubs. However, after a few months of being neglected, the Swissman was reassured by the new manager Mikel Arteta. When Mikel was appointed, I told him that I wanted to leave. He understood completely. I had talked it through with my wife. Our suitcases were literally placed by the door. When I have made a decision like that, it is very difficult to change my mind. But then Mikel began to talk about how I was a big part of his plans. I liked his warmth. Under Arteta, Jaka started showing his best football and finished last season with 7 goals and 8 assists in the league, which is the best result in his career so far. In summer though, Granit still left Arsenal after 7 years at the club, as he took on a new challenge at Bayer Leverkusen. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang As we have already mentioned, the Gabonese was made captain at Arsenal after Jaka's outburst in autumn 2019. The striker was a fan favorite and the team's best goal scorer, so it seemed the most logical decision to give the armband to him. The 2019-20 season was a very problematic one for Arsenal. The Gunners finished 8th, but Aubameyang managed to match his goal tally of 22 from the previous season nonetheless. However, his spell of relative success was followed by a crisis. The Gabonese only scored 10 goals in the league in the 2021 season, which seemed inexplicable. But the manager Mikel Arteta couldn't help but notice the reason behind Aubameyang's poor form, which was his work ethics. The striker turned extremely lazy, but the fans still had hoped his problems were temporary. But in reality, it was only getting worse with time. In late 2021, Arsenal announced that Aubameyang was stripped off his captain's armband due to his numerous disciplinary violations. As claimed by the British media, Pierre-Emerick taking a leave for a couple of days of help his mother, who was having health issues, was the final straw. Aubameyang returned later than he was agreed, and for that he was punished. Apart from his captain's armband, he was banished from team training. Later that season, the striker received a call-up from his national team in January, but didn't happen to play the African Cup of Nations. Shortly before the tournament, Aubameyang and Mario Lemina, his teammate, were having fun in Dubai and contracted COVID. That incident proved Pierre-Emerick hopeless in the eyes of the Arsenal board, so the final day of the January transfer window, he moved to Barcelona. The Gunners were so desperate to get rid of him that they let him go completely for free. Carlos Tevez, Manchester City The Argentine switched sides in July 2009. The former Red Devil joined United's bitter rivals, Man City. In his first season for City, Carlos Tevez set his personal record as he scored 23 goals in the Premier League. It didn't go unnoticed by Roberto Mancini, and in summer 2010, Carlos was made captain instead of Colo Touré. That decision ended up being a terribly premature one, as in December, Tevez already announced his desire to leave because of the problems he was having with some of his teammates. The board, however, denied his request as they weren't convinced by the player's reasoning. In addition to that, Carlos was punished as his armband was given to Belgian Vincent Company, who remained captain until the end of the 18-19 season. Tevez in his turn had to remain at Manchester City, and his spell at Etihad ended up being extremely controversial. There was a time when Carlos had a conflict with Mancini and refused to come in as a sub in a Champions League match, for which he was banished from team training for a couple of months. Such a thing obviously made the fans dislike him even more. They wanted Tevez out, but the Argentine nevertheless managed to reconcile with the manager and win the Premier League title at the end of the season. After that, he spent one more season at City before moving to Juventus in summer 2013. 
Leonardo Bonucci, Milan and Juventus. In summer 2017, Leonardo Bonucci had to leave Juventus for the first time. Shortly before the Champions League final against Real Madrid, he had a conflict with Dani Alves and they both were shown the door by Massimiliano Allegri. So after seven seasons at Juventus, Bonucci moved to Milan for 42 million euros. While he had a bunch of other options, Leonardo was determined to stay in Italy. High hopes were placed on him at the new club and Leonardo was made captain as soon as he joined Milan. As you might expect, there was a rash decision. Despite his natural leadership, Bonucci found it hard to do his duty as the new captain. While Milan spent as much as 186 million euros on new signings, it wasn't enough to make things work and Bonucci, the face of that team, was the one criticized the most. Milan finished 6th in Serie A and Bonucci's individual performance was no better. At the same time, it looked like there was no way he could ever reunite with his old club, especially after he celebrated his goal against Juventus in an away game. But eventually, the bridges were not yet burned and Leonardo still found a way to get back to Juventus. That deal cost Juve 35 million euros, which was 7 million less than what they had received for their captain a year before. Bonucci's second spell in Turin was far less successful. The team was no longer among the Serie A title contenders. But anyway, when Giorgio Chiellini left for MLS in summer 2022, it was Bonucci to be made the captain. The veteran didn't have as much playing time as he once had, but was determined to stay at the club until the end of his contract, which was January 2024. At the same time, the Juventus board had other plans, so last summer Bonucci was forced to leave. I've been reading rumors about my club planning to get rid of me for weeks, and only then I was told to leave. It was humiliating, after more than 500 matches for the club. I appreciate the support from players from different clubs. I was ready to stay as the 6th choice centre-back, but the board just didn't want me at the club. So in the end, the 36-year-old Bonucci moved to Union Berlin on the final days of the transfer window, as he signed a one-year contract with the German side. Raúl González, Real Madrid The Spanish legend was among the Real Madrid leaders since the mid-90s. Among his trophies are three Champions League titles, six La Liga titles and five Spanish Player of the Year individual awards. In 2003, when Fernando Hierro left Madrid, the 26-year-old Raúl took his place as captain to remain a fan favorite and a club legend until 2009. It was then when Florentino Perez took over the club for the second time and started splashing the cash on new signings, the like of Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, Kaká and many others. At that time, Raúl was already 32 years old and couldn't keep up with the new generation of football stars. However, he still decided to stay at Real Madrid, but he was hardly given a chance in the 2009-10 season and only managed to score 5 goals after 18 in the previous campaign. In summer 2010, the long-time Los Blancos leader realized that the club no longer needed him and made the decision to move to the German side Schalke as a free agent. The years spent at Real Madrid were wonderful. It's my club and I will forever remain a Madridista. Of course, being a captain at such a club is a great honor, but that's not what I was looking for. I could have stayed, but my intention was to enjoy playing football. Raul left Real Madrid as the club's best ever goalscorer with 323 goals to his name and the record for the most Champions League goals. Luckily for Real Madrid supporters, Cristiano Ronaldo lived up to the expectations, broke all Raul's records and ultimately matched his level of greatness. Sergio Busquets, Barcelona The Barca Academy product Busquets was a part of the club system since the early 2000s and with time evolved into one of the best metronomes. Under Guardiola, Sergio made it into the first 11, thus forming a fantastic midfield trio alongside Xavi and Iniesta. Due to his not-so-flashy playstyle, Sergio's impact often remained overlooked and he was even criticized for his lack of key passes. At the latter stages of his career, Busquets faced even more criticism as fans were wondering why he was still at the club. The situation was only getting worse. 
and thinks got really heated when Busquets rejected the proposed wage cut despite the club's financial crisis. The midfielder's salary was 24 million euros per year, which made him one of the three highest paid players at Barca. The fans and the board alike were trying to force the wage cut, but Busquets was too stubborn, making the fans furious. Last season was the time when the player and the club at last reconciled as Sergio's improved level of performance helped the Blaugrana win the La Liga title. Busquets' contract was to expire at the end of the season, but the Barca board were now willing to keep the player and offered him a new contract, though with a lower salary. After long consideration, Sergio rejected Xavi's request and left Barcelona for Inter Miami to reunite with Lionel Messi and Jordi Alba. Iker Casillas, Real Madrid Back in 2012, Iker Casillas was already considered a club legend and an untouchable figure for Los Blancos. However, things changed in a blink of an eye once a conflict between the captain and Jose Mourinho emerged. The head coach left Iker on the bench in the La Liga match against Malaga and Antonio Adán took his place in goal. Iker wasn't injured, and the fans and pundits alike found Mourinho's decision most surprising. Mourinho didn't tell me anything. We were on good terms, but he never explains his decisions, no matter if I play or not. The coach considers I've done the better option right now, and I have to respect his decision and train even harder. Mourinho, in turn, refused to elaborate on the matter, but the media still managed to find out the reason for their conflict. The thing was that Casillas was actively opposing Mourinho and questioning his decisions. The other version was about the Real Madrid starting lineup getting leaked ahead of a match against Barcelona. Jose tended to blame Casillas' wife, Sara Carbonero, the journalist, as the Portuguese was sure Iker was revealing information to her, unmindful of what it may lead to. A bit later, there came a more shocking news. In January 2013, a new keeper was signed. That was Diego Lopez, who immediately became the new number one for Los Blancos, while Casillas turned into an outcast and had to spend the rest of the season on the bench. Real Madrid soon parted ways with Mourinho, and it was believed that the reason for that was not the team's result, but rather his conflict with Casillas and the overall atmosphere in the dressing room. Under Ancelotti, Casillas was back to the starting 11 for the Champions League matches and won La Decima in 2014 but still left the club a year later as he moved to Porto. Harry Maguire, Manchester United In summer 2019, Englishman moved from Leicester to Manchester United for 87 million euros, which made him the most expensive centre-back in the history of football. At first, it all looked like a great deal as Harry's signing did add quality to United's defence. The ex-manager Ole Gunnar Solskjaer even called Maguire one of his two best signings. It's a disgrace that he's getting so much abuse. He raised our defending big time when he arrived and lifted the mood around the place. Only half a year later he joined United, Harry was given a captain's armband as Ashley Young left for Inter. Harry didn't look bad in his first two seasons at Old Trafford, but in the 2021-22 he suddenly turned into a disaster. His clumsiness and his numerous errors turned him into a man, while his poor positioning, tackling and skills on the ball cost Manchester United all too many points. That is why Harry Maguire has been booed by his own fans since that very season, no matter if he's playing for United or the national team. Harry's position at the club got even worse once Eric Ten Hag was appointed manager in summer 2022. Now, Maguire hardly ever makes it into the first 11, and when he does, there comes yet another mistake. As you would expect, he is no longer the captain, as the armband now belongs to Bruno Fernandes. As for Maguire, he was shown the door and the Englishman was about to join West Ham, but ultimately decided to stay and keep fighting for a place in the first 11. Taking into consideration Tenak's lack of trust and all the abuse Harry faced, we highly doubt he will ever make it. A captain's armband alone doesn't make leaders out of footballers. As Jose Mourinho once said, there is a big difference between a captain and a leader. You don't sign leaders, you don't create them. When you have one in your team, you're one step ahead. But people tend to care more about how they look than what they are nowadays. They see the armband and think of a man as a leader. 
it's not always true. Dear friends, please let us know in the comments which one of our today's heroes deserves the title of the worst captain and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.